This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven step approach of the AIAG VDA FMEA handbook first edition. Today we're focusing on step four, failure analysis. So let's just do a quick recap on what we've covered in step one, step two, step three. And hopefully now you've remembered the focus in the new manual about FMEA efficiency. So that's really management committing to the use of FMEA by making investment. Investment could be in the time of the multidisciplinary team, but it could also be providing the resources, financial resources, to implement any actions as a result of the FMEA activity. For example, implementing error-proofing devices. But hopefully we can convince management by doing this properly that there are sufficient benefits against the investment made. Reduction in customer complaints, reduction in warranty concerns, and importantly, the reduction in the cost of poor quality. Hopefully by now you've got some idea about the seven step approach promoted in the new AIG VDA handbook. We've already looked at system analysis which is step one, which is the planning and preparation, step two, which is the structure analysis, and step three, which is looking at the function analysis. We're now today going to be moving into step four, which is called failure analysis. Hopefully by now, if you've already looked at step one, two, and three, you can see in this video series, we're focusing on a case study where we're making a product for GM, this is an injected moldy component with metal pins and we are going to be using a robot to locate the pins into the tool. This is a process that we've not used before and the team have decided this is one of the focus steps to trial the use of the new AIG FMEA handbook. In step one, two and three we would have gained a really good understanding of the proposed process flow. We would have focused in on particular steps in the process and then we would have understood the 4M condition. But also we would understand the function of the overall product of the process step and of the specific 4M work elements. And remember in step three, we were looking at function and requirements. Now we are ready to go into step four. Step four is called failure analysis. Well, what is the purpose of this step? The purpose of the, this step is to identify failure causes, failure modes and effects, and, and show their relationship to enable risk assessment. So the objectives are, to establish the failure chain, we'll take a look at that in a minute, establish the potential failure effects, failure modes and failure causes for each of the process functions, identification of the process failure causes, and this will link to the work we did earlier on understanding the 4M work elements, and this will give us the input to go into step five, risk analysis. So in the previous slide, I used the term the failure chain. Those of you that have been involved in FMEA before will probably already have a good understanding of this. What we start off with is the potential failure mode. This is the focused element. We then go and think about the failure effect, what happens. Then we go and think about the potential failure causes, which is why could the failure mode happen? So let's look in a little bit more detail at the failure effect. So the failure effect is described in terms that the customer may notice or experience. When we think about the failure effect, we could be thinking about the internal customer, which could be the next operation. We could be thinking about the external customer. We could be thinking about legislative bodies or the product or the process end user or the operator, which in automotive could be the vehicle itself. Let's now look at failure mode. So in the handbook, the definition is the manner in which the process could cause the product 
not to deliver the intended function. And remember we looked at this in step three. Typical failure modes could include misaligned connector pins, the wrong pins inserted, no pins inserted, the pins haven't been correctly seated, or the pins have been placed but in the wrong location in the tool. These uh, failure modes relate to the case study that we've been looking at. And remember, these are potential failure modes. And finally, within the failure chain, we're going to look at the failure causes. The failure cause is an indication of why a failure mode could occur. So typical failures, and these will be linked to the 4M, could include things traceable back to the man, the setter or the operator. And remember in step two, we looked at the 4M risk analysis, I'm sure you would have identified that the man in most processes can actually be the cause of a failure. But also we can get causes that may come from the machine. In this case study, it could be the robot or it could be the molding machine or the tool itself. We need to think about the material. In this particular case study again, this could be the pins, the material pins that we're using, or there might be variation in the raw material that we're using for the injection molding. A failure could come from the proposed method. So maybe we've set the process up wrongly in operation 50. And also a potential cause could come from fluctuations in the environment. Maybe in a particular process, temperature is very important or maybe humidity. So as we've done in the previous steps, what we're looking at here now is looking at how do we fill in a template to capture the information that we've collected. And similar again in failure analysis, we have three things to consider. But we're gonna start at box two, the failure mode. So let's look at an example. Here, we've said that a failure mode could be the incorrect number of pins are inserted into the tool. What effect would that have? So now we go back to box one, the part will not give electrical connection with the customer mating part if we don't put in the correct number of pins. Then we go down to think about the failure causes. And remember, there could be multiple potential failure causes against one failure mode. But I give one example here, which is maybe the robot actually picked up three pins, but in moving the pins into the tool, one of the pins was dropped. So that could be one of the potential causes of failure. So with the way that we format an FMEA, this could be done in Excel spreadsheets, or obviously many people are selling specialist software to format an FMEA. Irrespective of what format we're using, as we've gone through step two, step three, step four, to remember that some of the boxes were all numbered one. So if we look at the process item function failure view, these should all line up. So what we looked at in process was the process item in step two, the function item in step three, and the failure effect in step four. So if we look at the way that these line up, what are we trying to produce? We're trying to produce an injection molded component with inserted pins. What does this need to do? So this component needs to connect with the customer mating part to allow the flow of electrical energy. And what could be a potential failure effect that the part will not fit the mating part? So if we look now at the boxes number two that we filled in in step two, step three, step four, again, there should be a good alignment. So we decided that we wanted to focus on injection molding step 60. What are we trying to do at step 60? We're trying to insert the correct number and type of pins that will withstand a pullout force of 1,000 newton meters from the injection molded component. 
Obviously there could be other things in a full FMEA, but here we're just looking at one example. And then what could be a failure mode, the incorrect number of pins have been inserted into the tool. So again, we get an alignment between the process step, the function of the process step, and the potential failure mode. And the final view we could take is looking at step two, step three, and step four, what we filled in box number three. So what is the 4M element here? It is the machine, which is the robot. What is the robot trying to do? The robot is trying to locate the required number of pins into the tool. What's the potential cause of failure? The pins could be dropped by the robot. So again, these line up between the process work element, step two, the function of the work element, step three, and the failure cause, step four. So let's summarize step four failure analysis. So the team now understand the potential of failure effects, the failure modes and the causes for each process function. Once we've done this, we can go into step five, risk analysis.